Hi everybody, welcome to Math 6 with Ms. Negron and Ms. Sofin. Today we'll, we will be talking about ratios and proportions. We will be covering the following topics. Basic ratios, unit rate, unit price, equivalent ratios, ratio tables and graphing, proportions, and percents. The first topic we will be talking about is basic ratios. So here's the first problem. There are 16 kittens and 24 puppies. Write the number of puppies to kittens. In ratios, it's very important to focus on the order in which the problem is asking. Here, it's asking puppies to kittens. Therefore, we can write it in one of three ways. 24 to 16, using the word to. We can write 24 colon 16, or we can write it as a fraction, 24 over 16. This pretty much covers basic ratios. The next topic we will be talking about is unit rate. A unit rate is a rate with a denominator of one. So in unit rate, the unit means the number one. So in the first question, it says, if Tiffany drove 24 miles using eight gallons of gas, how many miles did she drive per gallon. So we're comparing miles to gallons in this situation. So we know it's showing us that there are 24 miles to 8 gallons, but we want to find the unit rate, which means we want to find how many miles per gallon, per one gallon. So in order to do this, we need to divide both numbers, our miles and our gallons, by 8. We're basically just dividing 24 by 8 to find three miles per one gallon. So as we just said in unit rate, really what you're doing is just dividing. So that basically covers unit rate. Next topic we're gonna to be talking about is unit price. Much like unit rate, to find the unit price, you're dividing. However, in unit price, you must divide the price by the amount of items. So here's our question. A pack of six pairs of socks costs $7.80. What is the cost of one pair of socks? So again, we're finding unit price, unit being one. So we need to find the cost of one pair of socks. In order to do so, remember, order matters here, price always goes first, we're writing our ratio. So we know it's $7.80 per six pairs of socks. So again, we need to make sure we can see how much one pair of socks is. In order to do so, we are going to divide the price by the amount. So really, we're dividing both sides by six. And $7.80 gives us $1.30 for one pair of socks. This covers unit price. Our next topic is equivalent ratio. To find an equivalent ratio, multiply or divide the numerator and denominator by the same number. In this situation, we have five eighths. In order to make an equivalent ratio, we can multiply this, but we have to make sure we are multiplying by the same number. So in this instance, we're gonna multiply the five times the three, which gives us 15, but we can't just multiply the numerator, we also have to multiply the denominator. Therefore, we will multiply eight times three, which gives us 24. Likewise, we can also divide our ratio to get an equivalent ratio. So here we have 48 over 80. We can divide both of these numbers by 4. When we divide 48 by 4, we get the number 12. However, remember, we can't just divide the numerator. We also have to divide the denominator. So we're going to divide 80 by 4, and we're going to get 20. Here we are, another equivalent ratio. This covers equivalent ratios. Our next topic will be ratio tables and graphing. Do not forget the three things you need when graphing. They are scale, labels, such as your titles, x-axis and y-axis, and arrowheads. Maggie makes $5 an hour for babysitting. Create a table to determine how much Maggie will make after seven hours of babysitting. Then graph your table. 
So the first thing we need to do is locate our important information. It's showing that she makes $5 per hour for babysitting. We want to know how much money she's going to make in seven hours of babysitting. So the first thing we can do is, is write down our number of hours in a table. So this is showing our number of hours as our x values. The next thing we need to do is write our y values, which in this case will be her hourly rate in money. So it's showing that for one hour of work, she's making $5. In two hours, she's making $10. In three hours, she's making $15, and so on and so forth. Now, in order to graph these points, we need to find the coordinates. Therefore, for the numbers of hours being your x values and the hourly rate being our y values, we can just put it into x comma y. So for the first one, it shows one hour for five dollars. So our first coordinate point would be one comma five. Now we need to go back to our original question, which was determine how much Maggie will make after seven hours of babysitting. So we need to go down to seven hours, which is showing that she will make $35 in seven hours. Now to graph this table, always remember the three things that we need when graphing. Already we see that our arrowheads are there, but there are two more things that we need. We need to put our titles in and our scale. So on the bottom, it shows our number of hours, which is our x values. On the side, it's showing our hourly rate, which is our y values. Now, the scale for our number of hours, we went up by one, but for our hourly rate, we're gonna go up by five. So to graph these points, we first need to look at our x-axis. So the first point says one comma five. So we're gonna look at the one on the x-axis, which is the horizontal axis, and it's telling us to go up five. So our first point will be located right here. Our next point is two comma 10. So we're looking at the two on the x-axis, the number of hours, and we need to go up 10. So our next point will be located here. Third, for three hours, it's saying $15. So our next point will be here and so on and so forth. This covers ratio tables and graphing. Next, we'll be talking about proportion. Proportions are two ratios or fractions that are equal. So the way we can talk about this as is over of is equal to part over whole. Our first fraction is pretty much what we already know. The second fraction is what we are looking for, what we need to find, whether that be the part or the whole. There are two ways of solving proportions. The first method involves equivalent ratios. So here we have 60 over 42, and we want to find an equivalent ratio to 60 over 42 with the denominator as 7. So we are looking from the 42 to the 7. How did we get from 42 to 7? We know that all we have to do is divide by six. In fractions, you always have to do the same thing to the numerator that you are doing to the denominator and vice versa. Therefore, since we divided our 42 by six, we also have to divide our 60 by six, which gets us 10. So the equivalent ratio to 60 over 42 is 10 over seven. Our next method is called the cross multiplying or butterfly method. We have the same fractions. However, instead of finding, of finding an equivalent ratio, we are going to cross multiply. So you're going to multiply the numbers that are across from each other. So the first thing we have here is 60 and seven. So we're going to do 60 times seven and 42 times X. 60 times seven gives us 420. 42 times X simply gives us 42 X. In order to solve an equation, you must do inverse operations to isolate the variable. We are going to divide both sides by 42 to show that the 42 cancels out, and 420 divided by 42 gives us 10. So our answer is 10 equals x, the exact same thing we got in the first method. Now let's talk about proportions with coefficients other than 1. 
Here we have 3 over 5 is equal to 3x over 10. We're going to do the exact same thing using cross multiplication or the butterfly method. So the first thing we're looking at is 3 and 10. Then we're looking at 5 and 3x. 3 times 10 gives us 30. 5 times 3x gives us 15x. Again, we have an equation. So in order to solve for our variable, we must isolate it by doing inverse operations. 15x shows invisible multiplication, so therefore we are going to do division. We are dividing both sides by 15. When we divide 15x by 15, our 15s cancel out, and we are left with just x. And when we do 30 divided by 15, we are left with 2. So we know that x is equal to 2. Proportions with conversions. Adam runs 2 miles in 15 minutes. How many miles does he run in 1 hour? We're going to set up our ratios just like we normally do. However, in this situation, we have two different units. So we know that it's 2 miles for in 15 minutes. How many miles in 1 hour? Now, our miles are consistent. However, our minutes and our hours are two different units. So in order to fix this problem, we need to convert our one hour into minutes. So how many minutes are in one hour? 60 minutes in one hour. Now we can solve using equivalent ratios. How did we go from 15 to 60? We multiplied by four. Remember, when finding equivalent ratios, whatever you do to one part of the fraction, you must do to the other. So we're also going to multiply 2 by 4, and we get 8 miles. So we know that 2 miles in 15 minutes is equivalent to 8 miles in 60 minutes, or 1 hour. So our answer is, Adam ran 8 miles in 1 hour. This covers our topic of proportions. Next, we'll be So we're looking at percents, which focuses on the missing part. So in this problem, it's asking, what is 42% of 52? So we're going to set this up as a proportion. So we know that when we're setting up a proportion involving percents, the percent always goes over 100. And that is set equal to our is over our of. In this situation, we don't know what our is is, or our part, but we do know what our whole or our of is, which is 52. To solve this, we are going to use cross multiplication or the butterfly method. So we're going to look at 42 times 52 and 100 times x. So 42 times 52 gives us 2,184, which is set equal to 100 times x being 100x. We're going to divide both sides by 100. Hundreds cancel out. 2,184 divided by 100 is simply 21.84, which is equal to x. Here's another one. What percent is 3 out of 25? We're going to set this up as a proportion again. However, now we're looking for a different type of value. We're looking for our percent. So we're going to make x equal to our percent. And we know that our percents are always out of 100. We're also looking at our 3, which represents our part, and 25, which represents our whole. We're going to use cross multiplication. So we're looking at our x and our 25 and 103. x times 25 gives us 25x, which is equal to 100 times 3, which is 300. Now to solve for x, we are going to use inverse operations, which means we're going to divide both sides by 25. 25 divided by 25 cancels out, and we're just left with x. 300 divided by 25 gives us 12. So we know x is equal to 12%. Remember, in this problem, we were looking for a percent. So this covers percents as well. Thanks for joining us today, and hope you learned something.